Hello, my name is Kees Aerts. I'm the founder and CEO of Protex. And I'm very happy uh, that I was given the opportunity to present you uh, the Explorers Club uh, for the World Ocean Week about what Protex does and who we are. So I hope you're gonna enjoy it and hopefully uh, we speak each other soon and more face to face uh, than we currently can in this current crisis. Um, Protex, Protex is really about restoration and bringing this planet back in balance with nature. And our contribution is to enable less fishing for feed, less land for food, and to create circular nutrition for all. And these are our sustainable development goals that we can support and can enable. Um, first, we do believe that there will remain fishing for food. Uh, a lot of people live close to the sea, in the oceans, uh, and there's a lot of good fish, fish out there to eat. Um, but to fish for them and grind them up in a protein meal to feed to other animals, uh, we believe um, is less uh, valuable uh, from a global footprint, a resource perspective. Land, uh, we, we all see that land is eroding, we're deforestating the, the planet, um, which reduces biodiversity uh, and which reduces our resilience. Um, uh, as a natural system and as a humanity that has a place and a role within that natural system. And lastly, uh, in populated areas where we live, um, enjoy life, uh, eat, uh, the more we can create circular nutrition, uh, the more we can support our global population. That's our um, sustainability goal. And um, the way we can play a systemic uh, role is to serve the footprintarian in their road towards a positive footprint. So let's uh, give an example. A footprintarian is our holistic description of a, the future con conscious consumer, um, which is a consumer that basically wants to improve uh, all their purchase of services, goods and experiences um, to a, uh, a long-term future, to a sustainable future. Nowadays, it's, it's all about eating a little bit less meat or maybe flying less. But when you think of it, uh, each of us has a footprint. Uh, each individual has one, some bigger, some smaller. Uh, our global footprint is too large and exceeding the planetary boundaries. So every step we take, the things we do, experience, buy, um, has to uh, come within the planetary boundaries. And when we look at, at, at meat and seafood, um, uh, there are two steps a fruitarian uh, uh, can take. Uh, one is, first of all, make a choice. Um, not in the meat space, it's easier to go from something with a big footprint, uh, red meat, for instance, to more white meat, uh, eggs, fish, shrimp, chicken, and also plants. Um, and the fruitarian can demand the system behind to move to more low footprint production systems. Like in our case, to provide a protein source with a very low footprint that can be fed to chicken and fish. So then we will have a double whammer and double impact on the footprint of your end product. So our role is to create a new food system in balance with nature. This is how we serve both the animal and the plant side. So we as humanity and as humans and have, a food, have created a food system um, from land, from far to fork, from ocean um, uh, to what we eat. And in the meantime, we throw away a lot. Uh, we have a lot of residue, which is called uh, food waste, food byproducts, residues, you name it. But there's over a billion ton out there. Um, and there's more than a hundred million ton of protein and, and high quality nutrition locked away in that, which we otherwise incinerate, um, landfill or uh, convert to energy in digestion plants. And it's also a, a form of upcycling to energy, but it's not the same as preservation of nutrition for nutrition. And with insects, we can do that. We can grow insects on food waste and the nutritional parts, the proteins, the lipids, they can go to feed, to feed your pets, to feed animals or to feed us directly. Um, and this way, insect-based nutrition can, can truly enable a full transition to a food system in balance with nature. And the interesting part is there's another part of the production system of growing insects, and which is the insect fertilizer or insect residue. 
like in nature, insects grow on, on, on food waste or other material, and their residue, their, their insect manure, is the first step to microbiology and root nutrition interaction. Um, so insect fertilizer is a really strong and powerful way of growing plants, crops, fruits, seeds with a low footprint because it is uh, far more natural than, for instance, chemical fertilizer. So insect-based nutrition from a systemic perspective can support the animal side of our food system, but also the plant side of our food system. How we do that is by controlling every part of the life cycle. Uh, in our case, we focus on the black soldier fly, which is particularly good because the larvae need to store all its nutrients to uh, grow, uh, to convert into pupae, to hatch, to become flies, mate and lay eggs. The crazy thing is the black soldier fly, as a fly, doesn't eat. So that means that all the nutrition had to be stored in the larval stage. This makes them particularly rich in proteins, lipids and other nutrients. Another interesting part is that they grow fast, they, they replicate in large numbers, so um, our breeding facility can support large amounts of growth facilities. And the larvae have an interesting mouth bit, bit that can grow and that can eat a lot of different food waste. So systemically, we can grow our larvae on a wide range of food waste streams. If we want to go to Doing that at a large scale, you need to separate that in building blocks. So what we, when we would walk around in our facility, we'd see three major building blocks. First, the breeding, then the rearing, and then the processing. In the breeding, we grow our flies, we make sure they mate, we harvest the eggs. And in the rearing, we really upgrade food waste by growing the larvae in a very fast way, in a controlled way, in a hygienic way, and then harvest them from the food waste. And this gives us two fractions. The larvae, which is the basic for the downstream processing into nutrition, and the fertilizer, which is a basic to bring to crop production and, and um, uh, to agricultural uh, lands. And these three building blocks we have engineered for, we develop new operating principles, we, we develop new um, research uh, areas. And, and, and we basically built a full-scale facility to produce insects and to create insect-based nutrition at a large scale. How does it look like? Well, this is our facility that we opened last year in 2019. It's truly a landmark transition moment for the insect sector, for us as a company, but also for the, um, uh, uh, for the sector, the insect um, industry because it, it shows maturity, it shows scale, it helps governments to create new uh, regulatory frameworks, but most importantly, also transition for our customers, because they can now see that it's the here to stay, it has elevated itself from the startup and the scale-up stage into a commercially operating business, um, uh, from which we can reliably supply our customers. And everything inside is controlled from the breeding uh, cages to the processing, high-end processing, uh, even food grades, uh, from feedstock intake, solids, lip, uh, liquids, um, to the high-end bagging and, and anything in between. Uh, we can control every step, trace every, every truck that comes into every big bag that goes out uh, and that is served to our customer. And for us, this picture, um, uh, yeah, this is a, a bit our sexy Model 3 moment uh, where uh, we uh, show customers that these bags of high quality protein meal are there and ready to be delivered and shipped to your site. Um, most people will probably just see a big bag. I see a really uh, a sexy uh, bag of nutrition uh, that can enable an, an entire new food system uh, with a low footprint. Now, when we talk about uh, the World Ocean Week, um, one of the bigger topics is, of course, uh, that oceans are running empty um, uh, for one part of the problem by overfishing. And uh, history is there uh, to learn from, but overfishing also is, is because fish is, of course, a good source of nutrition. Uh, when you catch a lot of fish, you grind them up in a protein meal, a lot of animals really grow well on that. 
So um, uh, the aquaculture industry uh, needs uh, high quality nutrition uh, and there are big topics currently uh, within the aquaculture industry, industry that are addressed simply because we're running into uh, the, the limits of our natural uh, systems. Now, key topics are among other gut and immune health, uh, alternative ingredient development, safety, climate change, you name it. And uh, within that, there are, of course, a lot of topics that are currently being uh, researched for. Um, uh, one, uh, for instance, the appropriate and symbiotic inclusion, um, the development of plant protein inclusion in feeds, uh, contaminant reductions. Uh, a lot of plant sources or also oceanic sources have high contaminants. Um, within a controlled environments, we've got water temperature and hypoxia that need to take care of. But most important for me and the most interesting, I believe, is the immune response modulation. And I will tell a little bit more about that later. But the cool thing later, lately in the insect industry is that there's a huge body of research emerging. Uh, when I started 11 years ago, it was literally, literally a hobby industry and now it's truly becoming a mature industry with professional R&D departments and a lot of very, very strong uh, interaction with universities and, and, and research programs. Um, when we dive into it, the, the three major topics for insect-based nutrition within the aquaculture industry uh, and innovation. It's mostly on the composition, uh, the level of inclusion and the health benefits of this new category. And this is where I come to the most exciting part is that insect-based nutrition, and our vision uh, is that insect-based nutrition will play a very strong and perhaps even a pivotal role in the food system of the future, um, uh, is by definition a separate category. Uh, it's not just another protein meal. It's a new category of nutrition with its unique benefits and applications. And we've proven that because in one of the research we did with the University of Leuven, um, we did an immune response modulation assay, um, which was, uh, we, we covered both the, the, the chemical assays, the enzymatic approach and the cellular response models. And we compared it to other grand categories like chicken meal and fish meal. And what we observed is that it really had a strong antioxidant behavior um, versus some of the others showed a strong pro-oxidant behavior. And this makes it very interesting because when you think of it, when animals, reptiles, birds, or even mammals, fish uh, are young, they tend to eat insects, especially when they're young, have to grow fast, and when they need to build their defense system. So, um, and this is an in vitro test, so there will be subsequent in vivo testing, uh, but this is a very, very strong indicator that there will be benefits uh, based on, uh, for, for the health and immune response uh, of target animals. And that supports the argument of a true, separate, new category of nutrition. And of course, there are other alternatives like plant extracts, seaweeds, uh, we've got poultry byproducts or single cell protein, and each of them will have their place, but the availability and the scale at which we can now already produce insect-based nutrition, um, the, the, the promise of the cost structure in the coming years, um, and more and more body of evidence on the unique benefits like uh, the strong antioxidant behavior um, and the unique application potential makes insect Industry, the insect industry, a really exciting industry to contribute to a sustainable um, a food system and in particular a sustainable aquaculture industry. Um, aside that, we've shown and proven together with our partners that we literally impact uh, the, the footprint. We can reduce um, uh, land, water, and energy uh, by up to 77% uh, for the lipids. Uh, we can dramatically reduce the uh, aquatic acidification, um, the water use, um, and, and, and uh, the greenhouse gas contribution of the proteins. So not only is it a natural and an originally sound and common sense product, but it also has huge uh, footprint impact if applied well and if applied at scale. Um, I will round off, but uh, insect-based production has a huge potential to bring our uh, society back in balance with nature. And we can produce it vertically, intensely. Our facility is, is over 12 layers. 
Uh, we can shorten supply chains. We can directly use um, uh, food waste uh, by feeding it to the insects and directly feed it back to animals. Uh, and if applied well in the right regions, we can hugely impact uh, and reduce the protein import uh, dependency. And in a new post-corona world, self-sufficiency will be higher on the agenda. So um, applying this in the periphery of large cities and populated areas will dramatically uh, reduce the need to import. Um, that brings me uh, roughly to the end. Protex is really at the center of a lot of new uh, concepts and, and propositions, whether it's an egg uh, coming from chickens fed with insects, or it's a new plant with a lower uh, uh, GHG uh, contribution because the soil uh, has been improved with a fertilizer, uh, whether it's fish, marine independent because you don't need fish meal, or of course pets, uh, pets eat a lot of meat. Um, if that can be replaced by sustainable ingredient, your social extension of the family can be done without any guilt um, because your footprint won't be uh, much bigger. Uh, and, and quite soon also direct as meat replacements and, and, and high quality protein products. Um, the meat, the seafood industry, they are very, very big industries and there's a huge growth in the plant-based alternatives but also within the meat and the seafood industry, we see a huge growth market for uh, the green alternative, basically shrimp, chicken, eggs, fish, grown on sustainable ingredients with a low footprint. Um, and that's exactly what we do. Our values framework is, um, uh, is built on top, of course, to excite our uh, customers and our partners with insects. On the left side, our action agenda, we'd like to pioneer in a safe environment. Uh, on the right, our purpose agenda, uh, we care about Mother Earth and love to build a great company um, together. And, and when that all comes together, we can enjoy life as a, as a company, as, an, as, a, as, a, as a team with our colleagues, and then, of course, also individually. Um, that brings me to the end. Um, a whole new category of nutrition, a whole new uh, part of the food system, insect-based nutrition, uh, to upcycle food waste back into high quality nutrition, naturally sound, common sense, um, and it will enable us to, uh, to create a guilt-free food system uh, with a sustainable and long-term future. So thanks again. Uh, it was a pleasure uh, to take part, uh, and I hope to meet a lot of you uh, very soon. Thank you.